All right. Hello, everybody. It is Friday, August 20th. Happy Friday to you all. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, <laughs> I hope that a lot. I pray that a lot because things are really, really, really crazy out there in the world right now. And uh, yeah, I just pray that you and your family and your friends are all having a fantastic day. Uh, we're having a good one here. The uh, weather has cooled down here in the Northwest. It's uh, now in the 70s, right where I like it to be, although Mrs. Martian would prefer it to be back up in the 80s and 90s. Uh, I'm happy because it's a lot easier to do work uh, when it's 70 degrees outside and not 80. Uh, normally on Fridays, we were going to have Bart join us, and he unfortunately is stuck on an airplane last night. He was actually at the uh, Space Ag Conference uh, briefing on behalf of Eating Grow Systems. We're up there with Alexa Microsoft and some other big names uh, that are in the tech side of ag right now, believe it or not. And it sounds like everything went really, really well, made some great connections. Um, and uh, he was on his way back last night uh, from the Space Ag Conference, which we have posted to our LinkedIn page, uh, Facebook. You can go there and you can get links and see the video and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, I think we're going to try to get some video for you as well. But he was coming in through Denver. He's flying United and uh, got into Denver. Apparently, there's like a really big storm in Denver. I don't know if any of you are watching from Denver, but it sounds like it was pretty bad. And uh, I don't think there was any damage or anything that I, at least I haven't heard about it. Uh, but it grounded uh, planes uh, throughout the day, the afternoon, and it just created, you know, that backup that happens when you're, when you're out there. Uh, you get the backup and uh, then you can't, you just got to sit and wait, you know. Uh, so he ended up having to get a hotel and uh, then he was uh, scheduled to fly back last night, but they, they pushed it. So he slept there and uh, is on an airplane right now uh, headed back to Houston. So uh, we're excited about that happening this week. It's, uh, we're starting to get some more of those big events where we're out there talking uh, to folks and it's uh, cool seeing all those things happen. So again, welcome to the live stream here. Uh, hope you and your family are having a great day. Going to go over our normal topics, so what we've been up to this week, and then also have some conversation pieces uh, to go over towards the end here. Uh, encourage you to uh, add your comments, add your questions. If you're watching this without the live version, uh, I would love to know, and for those um, watching, one, love to know questions and answers that you guys have, so uh, feel free to put them in the comment section. Uh, bash that like button, of course, so that's always good. Uh, uh, to help us out, but I definitely want to know your guys' questions. Uh, I haven't been able to do a lot of uh, content content lately because we've been so busy uh, standing up a business. Uh, it takes a lot of work to stand up a business. So I do want to know your questions. You know, what would you like to know, especially for our subscribers that have been around for a long time. Uh, but for everyone who's brand new, love to know your questions and would be happy to answer them. So please do uh, send me that information. Uh, Got some interesting stuff to talk about this week. Um, Want to go over some of the new features we have. Uh, been working on the towers, and let me show you here. It's actually just easier to show. How how do I I'm trying to think of how do I want to say this? So uh, basically, we now have the ability to see. Uh, we're we're adding one of the features that we have live camera action going on here, um, so we can actually see what's happening on our cameras. Uh, which is really, really cool on the towers, excuse me, using cameras. And uh, this is setting up the precursor capability, one, to rem remote view and monitor your crops uh, so you don't have to be at home, uh, two, to set up the computers to actually start doing that monitoring for you so that you don't even really have to watch it anymore. Uh, so we have some new, some experimenting that we're doing with the cameras, but we just enabled them, and uh, it's pretty cool seeing those things uh, come come online. It's also been a major headache because my network is just killing me. It's just sitting there and it works. It doesn't work. It works. It doesn't work. Something's wrong in my network settings, not on the, the towers, but on my actual network. And it's not letting the data through correctly. And I got some latency issues. So uh, <laughs> uh, needless to say, we, I've spent a lot of time on information technology. So we've actually posted two new jobs uh, to our website. One is just general. So if you go to eatinggrowsystems.com and you're interested in what we're doing, you can go to the general tab. Uh, if you don't see a job that's you, 
you know, and what you want to do, and you can apply there. But the one that I'm, I'm, I'm advertising right now is we need to hire an information technology enterprise architect person who manages all this infrastructure and stuff for us, uh, which is cool that I even get to say that. You know, if you've been watching, you know where we've come from and where we're going, and it's neat. <laughs> it's so cool being able to go uh, from where we're at to where we are now. Um, God is good, right? God is good all the time. Amen. Uh, so yeah, getting these features put in place uh, and seeing them start to come online is really, really neat. We're also updating the app. I just got done doing a whole bunch of modeling uh, so I can hand it over to our software product owner and he is now starting to code on that. We're also doing some updates to the, uh, the original app that I wrote. Uh, we have to re-architect the whole thing because what I wrote won't scale fast enough and uh, isn't secure enough, doesn't have all the people who know what they're doing during coding type of stuff in there. So we're we're redoing that and uh, making it better. So totally appreci appreciate his efforts and coming online and, and helping us do that. But we had to get a bunch of modeling done to translate everything out of here into a document so someone else could see it and follow along with it. So uh, we're excited uh, that that's going, uh, but there's a lot going on there this week. We also have row operations back up and running. So the version one towers, we planted them last week. We actually had a little bit of problem with our potatoes. Um, we had too much water going and they molded on us. So we had to take those potatoes out of the system and uh, Eli's actually out there right now uh, cutting and, and replanting potatoes and we're, we're changing our settings. So, and that's part of what we're trying to figure out, you know, is all this stuff that you have to search the internet for, or read books on, we're doing all that work. We're doing these experiments, very, very controlled experiments now, very detailed experiments, making sure we write down every little detail so that we can go back afterwards and create what we call grow programs. Uh, so these are the programs that as soon as the user, you know, selects, I want to grow potatoes, they just say, I just planted a potato. The system just knows everything. It sets the light, sets the fan, sets uh, the watering program. Uh, and then as we add sensors into the system, which we actually started looking at this week as well, uh, then we'll be able to uh, start uh, really monitoring and changing things live using machine learning and stuff. And why is that important? Well, it's because we want to use technology to help people that don't know how to grow anything, right? There's, there's technology that's good. There's technology that's bad. We're seeing a lot of the bad technology these days, but technology can be used for good things. I mean, fire is technology. I don't think anyone would argue that just because we have forest fires, we should out well, in today's world, they might. <laughs> you never know. Uh, but what I was going to say is just because, you know, a fire can burn down a forest doesn't mean that fire should not be used. Uh, fire is also really good for heating, uh, for running your engines. Uh, <laughs> combustion is a good thing. Uh, but any technology can be used for evil. Any technology can be used for bad. And uh, we're... And also technology can be used for good just as much. So we're trying to take technology and use it for the, the good reasons. And I say that because there's not a lot of people out there these days that are kind of in the middle anymore. It's, you know, you're one or the other. Uh, technology is evil. Technology is amazing. It's going to save us. It's the new God. You know, and that's, I'm not talking about either one of those. I'm saying that technology can be very, very helpful when used by people who use it the right way. And at Eden, we're trying to use technology in a way that's actually helpful so that people who don't know how to do something uh, or don't have the space, they don't have space for a garden, uh, they don't have time for a garden, but by using technology, we can actually give them the ability to grow their own food in their house where they're at um, and not have to go through you know, all the lessons that any, anybody following this channel, if you've seen my lessons learning, it's a steep learning curve. Um, and for those that have gardened, you know that it takes a lot to garden and to grow your food successfully. So um, these grow programs that we're going to be figuring out are really important to making it easy for people to uh, grow their own food uh, and not have to go through those huge learning curves. So the fact that we're out there capturing this information in experiments right now is a really big deal. Uh, and I'm very excited about it. And getting these cameras going to where we can monitor things and then have the machine learning integrated to where it's looking for changes that um, you know, indicate some form of pest, infestation, disease. Uh, you know, those are all things we want to watch. Speaking of disease, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Eli this week because uh, we actually got some strawberries that came in 
and we put them in the system. They weren't really looking right, and we got in there closer to them and noticed there was this like gray substance on it. And I was like, you know, we should probably spray that with hydrogen peroxide. That doesn't look good. Uh, but we were out of hydrogen peroxide, so we had to order that. Uh, thank God for UPS and Amazon. And we got them on the way. But in the meantime, he went and did some work on his own, and he figured out that that gray stuff, I forget the name of it, but it's, uh, it's not good. It's El Dato, as I like to say. And uh, we were able to yank those strawberries out of the system. And uh, we just got some new ones, or we should got some new ones yesterday uh, that are fresh and started already. So we're going to be uh, de-dirtying those and uh, cleaning them up, going through the, the uh, bug inspection protocol, uh, no bugs allowed, and uh, pest inspection protocol, no fungus allowed, and uh, get those put into the system. And uh, they should be doing well. But yeah, we got... We actually have grapes growing this time around we're, we're trying not to grow the same stuff we grew before if we've proven that it, it grows we're we're trying to do different things now to get that list of things that we know grow to be a lot longer but we're also growing red and green grapes and i think it's the red grapes have already budded and have leafed and in like one week it went from no leaf to like leaf leaf and uh, haven't seen the white roots come out yet on the underside because, you know, when you have aeroponics, your roots are different. Um, they go from the normal big woody uh, kind of bulky root uh, to the very fine white roots uh, that are for aeroponics. So haven't seen those come out yet, but the plant's growing. Uh, so that's great news. And we're working on trellising uh, those up using the version one trellises, which are just uh, ropes hanging down, essentially. Uh, garden twine and uh, you know the normal uh, clips that you would use for that so uh, lots of good stuff going on growing our website uh, you guys don't see it yet but if you go to eatinggrowsystems.com you'll see our, our existing website uh, which isn't bad but we want it to be a lot better and so we've got a group of folks uh, on the team here you know we're a team of seven now and they're working on the website getting it better so in the next few uh, weeks you can expect to see a brand new website coming online and we'd love to get your feedback on that when it does come online. But definitely go check out eatinggrowsystems.com and uh, it's uh, it's pretty cool seeing all these things come together. What else is there? Uh, Bart's at the, con he went to the conference for two days. Uh, I think it was at University of North Dakota. North Dakota, eh? And uh, hi everybody up there from uh, University of North Dakota. I'm an Embry-Riddle grad, so I'm your competition, but uh, Major uh, respect to you guys up there for your UAV program, your space program, and your growing program that you guys are doing. So uh, good stuff up there at North Dakota. Uh, and Bart made a lot of good contacts, some of the likes of NASA. Uh, so very cool seeing those things come along. And I hear they went and watched The Martian. Like, who watches The Martian these days when you could watch The Real Martian? Come on, guys. You should know better than that. Watch The Real Martian. Uh, I'm not as entertaining when I'm doing sit-down talks, obviously, as my outdoor, am I going to fall on my head type of stuff that y'all love to watch. But uh, still, come on. You should be watching The Real Martian, not not The Martian. This is, this is fake. We're, we're real. You know, you can't do that. Anyway, uh, so Bart's been doing that, and uh, we got some good investment coming in, so that's going well. So if you are watching this and you're an investor and you're like, hey, I want to see if these crazy guys can pull this off, well, we are. And uh, now it's time to get in, quite honestly, because our stock prices are going up and up and up and up and up. And that's a great thing for all the family and friends that have uh, have invested in us. Uh, your investment's worth a lot more than what it used to be. Uh, so, uh, And as we uh, get closer and closer to our product launch, um, we really support your – we're really grateful for your support. And uh, I want to say thank you to everyone who believed in us from the very beginning. Uh, it's very much appreciated, and we wouldn't be here without you. And uh, for everyone who's coming online supporting us now, we'll really appreciate that as well. Um, for everybody watching, you know, I don't, you know, how many of you are going to make it this far or whatever, but you've watched us from the beginning, what is it, five years ago, uh, or you've joined along the journey. Um, it has been challenging, but we have persisted and we keep going forward and we keep trying to uh, overcome all the challenges. And quite honestly, we wouldn't be here without God. I know some of you don't like that, but uh, in these days, you're gonna have to figure out what side you believe. I'm, I'm a believer in the creation, I'm a believer in the creator, and uh, Jesus Christ is my savior because I can't follow the rules that are out there. And uh, so 
anyway, we would not be here without him. Because quite honestly, everything is an answered prayer. Um, it is. It really is. It's it's miraculous in a sense uh, that we've been here. So props to that guy upstairs. You recognize him, right? Um, I'm definitely not ashamed to say that. So uh, let's move over into some topics, shall we? Uh, this week, without Bart here, kind of hard to have that back and forth, but I want to show you just some stuff. I'm going to come back to this one. That one really gets me. But uh, at Eden, we're about food, right? We're about helping people have food and energy independence, right? And food and energy independence means food security. Food security means you're getting what you need to eat, to survive, and to thrive. Uh, it's not just about getting your basic calories. It's about getting enough where you can actually have the food that you need to uh, thrive. And what we're seeing is... We're seeing a trend quite on, I mean, so here's the problem, folks. I mean, I used to be in information operations. You can go back, check out the video I did on information operations a long time ago. So it's not like I'm a fool here. When you pull up the headlines these days, it's kind of all propaganda. Uh, even people who think they're doing good things, you've got to look through it at, through the lens of, is this propaganda? And most of it is. Most of it is. And you can't really prove it yourself. You can't go out there and do the research yourself. But because everything's paid for by money and because these reporting sites uh, are either government or they are privately uh, encouraged, meaning that they work on the capital market, right? So it's um, how many clicks do I get, right? They got to have a cool thumbnail. They got to have engaging title and they've got to have some form of topic that's going to just create that that article that's going to take off so they get paid for it. And uh, I don't know of any news agencies right now that are not in some way, shape, or form, or even independent reporters that are not in some way, shape, or form impacted by the algorithm, right? Uh, the algorithm is running our life. Uh, when that happened, when, when did the algorithm take over and we all have to do what the algorithm says? I, it's not Skynet, but... The idea is that our activities on a normal basis are now being run by an algorithm, right? What I put up on YouTube is algorithm. Uh, what I put up on Facebook and Twitter, it's algorithm, right? You want to be noticed. It's algorithm. How do you get the algorithm to get, get a hold of you? Well, all the news agencies, uh, all the reporters, everybody out there, the independents, all of them have to be captured by the algorithm. Otherwise, their information won't be shared. So I'm aware of, and I say all that to say that you should be aware of, that every single news source that you have, whether it be a person or whatever, you should be sitting there going, hmm, is this something that I should be paying attention to, or, or, or am I being influenced? And, and quite honestly, you're going to be influenced, right? So if I look at these articles here, uh, I look at them and I say, yeah, you got a great picture here beautiful child uh, and what I'm seeing is smiles and happiness and what they're that's a juxtaposition to the the title right global population is exploding and food security hinges upon biotech crops right because biotech crops result in child being happy um, beautiful child here and very happy eating the whatever that fruit <laughs> appears to be I don't know what that sweet potato it's a sweet potato okay um, obviously you know, food does lead to healthy children. Uh, studies have been done where uh, people who are malnourished, uh, like a lot of folks down in um, the area here, down in Africa and uh, some other parts of the world that are just really, you know, really unfortunate, you know, smaller brains, bodies don't fully develop, not enough nutrients to actually help them fully mature as a human being. It's extremely sad when you think about it. And what we're doing here at Eden, we're hopeful that one day we're going to get to them, right? Uh, we've got to start where the money is, and we've got to work our way into getting uh, capabilities to these folks because this is what we want. That's where our heart is at, that child right there. But what I wanted to draw your attention to is this word biotech crops, right? The answer is technology in our food. Now, I'm against that. I'm not a fan of that. I don't like the idea of CRISPR technology coming in and playing around with our food. I, genetics is too complicated to randomly go and do stuff. And you cannot tell me you know the full impact of genetics with one or two or even five years worth of study. 
they're beyond tertiary effects of messing around with genetics. Uh, and as we see I, patterns of our history repeat, right? Things like Roundup created for really good reasons have beyond tertiary effects, primary, secondary, tertiary, right? So we're talking beyond third level impacts and we're seeing the impacts of Roundup on plants right now after what, a decade, two decades, three decades, 1970s I think was when Roundup was created. And we're seeing effects of that happening today. We're still understanding the impact of a chemical that is outside the body, that is complicated, don't get me wrong, it is chemistry, um, but it's nowhere close to genetics. Um, so when we see people talking about biotech crops, dander goes up, hair on the back of my neck goes up, and I'm like, what in the world? I'm, why are we not helping people learn how to grow their own food? Why, why, like, why is it we're not doing water networks all over the planet? Like, you know, half of the, half of the United States is getting bombarded with rain and the other half is dry. Well, why are we screwing around with, put the internet everywhere? Why don't we get the water everywhere? You know, that kind of stuff really gets under my skin, just stupidity. We should have a water network. We should be taking flood zones in Europe and moving them to places where there is no water so that people can grow their own damn food. Um, but no, that would make sense, you know. What? No, it would create jobs. It would be like a modern day highway infrastructure bill that actually results in infrastructure being built rather than a whole bunch of crappy programs being put in place to just make rich people richer. All right, there's Soapbox moving on. Uh, I'm obviously skipping the topic of that one. Let's see the next headline here. Next headline, food insecurity grows by a third due to pandemic. Uh, some 1.2 billion people do not get enough to eat to sustain a healthy and active lifestyle in 76 countries monitored by the USDA for food insecurity. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's true. You know, when COVID first happened, I, I, I was a little scared about what it was. I kind of overreacted in certain areas. In other areas, I was actually spot on. One of the areas that I was spot on about is logistics. Um, this pandemic thing, it really impacts logistics. And there are now more than one reason why logistics are being impacted. Uh, you've got the drivers, right? The drivers are a big deal. Can't get enough truck drivers to get the food and, and supplies and gas to where they need to be. Well, why is that? Well, either they're, they can't come back to work, or they're sick. That, that would be the first thing. They don't want to come back to work because it's not monetarily responsible, uh, to put it that way. There's a better deal out there uh, for them. Uh, so why go back to doing what they're doing when uh, they can put food on their table in a different manner and have a higher quality of life with their family and not have to do what they're doing, uh, to say that nicely. So um, And people who make that choice, that's your choice. I mean, if, quite honestly, if somebody offers you a bunch of money over here and over here, is less money and this one doesn't require you to do work, which one are you gonna choose, right? It's pretty simple, pretty simple. Um, but besides that, you also have hospitals starting to fill up again and uh, that means people can't get treated and that means people have to stay home and when you have a two week, uh, you need to sit there and you need to be stuck in your house, quarantine, uh, it's really hard to have consistent logistics. So I see this as a logistic problem. There are many more things that we could get into that I'm not going to get into on here. I'm not on Rumble, I'm not on LifeSpace or what are those other ones that you go to and you could really get into this stuff. But I think anyone that has a brain knows there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into this that isn't just the basics. So uh, we've, we've got some interesting things going on with food security. So I do wanna encourage everyone to see QA. Thanks for posting a, a comment here. I uh, really do appreciate, oh, and that whole time, guys, I was not, <laughs> there, this is the thing I was talking about. I wasn't sharing my screen, darn it. Okay, uh, QA, thanks for your comment. Let's see here. You need to push adverts in the UK market. We have food issues here. Supermarkets have got empty shelves, nothing to do with COVID. Rest of EU got no shortage of food. Uh, yeah, we want to. Uh, we definitely want to. So there's a stepping stone approach that we're going on. Uh, so what what we have happening here is we've got to get the technology figured out here. We've got to launch it here in the US and then we've got to go through the State Department, Department of Treasury, get our export licenses, and then we can export out 
uh, it should be uh, it should be a slam dunk that we can export this technology. It should be a commercial. It's not military. It's not DoD. It's not going to fall under the international trade uh, arms regulations. So uh, the ITAR, uh, which is uh, in my previous life I've had to deal with. So we should be able to export here, but we've got to get our stuff, the, the foundation laid, and then we'll be able to start stepping it up. But QA, definitely go to our website and sign up as an early adopter if you're interested in that. Uh, so a pre-order type of thing. And uh, maybe you could be one of the first people. Renato, thanks for joining on. Uh, you know, get you guys signed up and, and um, you have to buy a tower, but maybe you could be one of the first people that helps us actually export, you know, if you're willing to work with us because we've got to go through that process. We've got to learn how to do it as corporately uh, so that we can be successful in doing it. So I see my time's coming up here. Let me get to a few more of these articles. But um, if you do have comments, uh, please do submit comments. Uh, and uh, and your questions now would be a good time to start filling up the feed uh, with those. And again, if you're watching this in the non-live version, then please do um, add your comments to the uh, add your questions to the comment field. Uh, here's one: soaring cost of food is forcing families to scrimp at the dinner table, right? Uh, yeah, this is another sad one. Um, supermarkets, everybody. I was asking Alicia, uh, Mrs. Martian, she went to the uh, store yesterday, and I said, you know, how do our store shelves look? And uh, she said, you know, they're full, but they're moving stuff around, you know, and they don't normally do that. And if you've worked in retail, then you know the moving around game is something you do to, one, keep your customers looking for, um, looking for the product so they find other product. There's a store that's really, really good at this. It starts with a C and ends with OSCO, uh, and they are phenomenal at this marketing approach, right? So um, presentation, uh, how they stock everything. They'll they'll have you go to a normal section, but then you know once you know where to go, you can avoid all the other places, right? They have all the other cool stuff that they could get you to buy, right? Every time you go to Costco, it's well over a hundred dollars, even if you went there for one thing like toilet paper. You still come out buying a hundred dollars worth of stuff, guaranteed. Uh, it's because they're so good at how they stock everything and they move it around to keep you, you know, interested and, and get you to walk past new stuff. So that's one reason why they uh, restock their shelves that way. Another one is they'll, they'll actually spread stuff out. So if certain products are short in supply, then what they'll do is they'll reface everything and, and spread things out, uh, bring stuff forward. So instead of, you know, having maybe they used to have just two rows deep of cans, what they'll do is they'll bring those cans up and spread them out so that the shelves look full. So I would encourage everybody, if you're going to the market, um, look for these behaviors. Uh, what you want to see is, is beyond the initial facing, you want to see the stock level behind it. And it's very easy to see as you're getting your grocery cart, as you're going down the aisles, you just peek back there and you just notice if you can see the back of the shelf. And if you can see the back of the shelf, that means that their stock is lower than it should be because no grocery store allows their stock to get below a full shelf. They, they have a whole stock room that's filled for about three days, and they're just constantly bringing stuff out. And as they sell stuff, more stuff is ordered, and it comes in. It's a great system as far as in-demand stuff goes. It's a very sensitive system as far as logistics goes. So when a logistics starts to get interrupted, what you're going to see are these shelves. You'll see them restocking, re-merchandising everything, refacing it so that um, they can hide these things. Uh, that are coming on so what you that's what you want to look for and also you want to look at the quality of your fruits and veg vegetables uh, what do they look like are they are they kind of looking brown and sour uh, if they are if they're overripe then what we're starting to do is get to the bottom of the barrel and that's important uh, for many many reasons which I'll, I'll get to personal stuff at the end here I haven't shared personal things for a while but I think today's a good day let's go to the next article here Cost of groceries eating out continue to climb across the United States. Well, I would say that uh, they are uh, continuing to climb everywhere. And this is a uh, darn near a biblical thing that I'll, I'll come back to. Uh, but we're seeing be between inflation uh, and the pandemic logistical impacts, which I believe are a primary thing. The drought in the United States on the West Coast is actually a big deal, right? Because uh, one third of the West of, of America's um, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables come out of California. Two thirds of fruits and nuts come out of California. So the drought there is definitely 
a big deal. And we feel that drought here in uh, Washington State as well. We're on the West Coast. We're in the east of the mountains, which is nice given our political leanings. Um, more people just leave you alone here. So, hey, everybody, make sure you're putting comments in. Uh, get them going. Get the questions up and running here, uh, and I'll, I'll bang a few of them out here. Uh, but I definitely want to encourage everyone to put your comments in um, as we're going through these things. But anyway, yeah, we've got cost of groceries is definitely going up. And this, unfortunately, because of inflation, means that there's less money for other things. And, um, you know, your pay doesn't go up when things are inflated. Uh, but the cost of goods does. The dollar isn't going as far. Let's check out the next one. Uh, okay. Grocery prices continue to rise, and there's no end in sight. Yeah, that's great. Happy news. Uh, are you ready to start growing your own food yet, folks? Because if you're not, you should be. Uh, you can go to High Mowing Seeds, Organic Seeds online. We really like them. Get your seeds. Get them now. Buy, buy, buy. Get those seeds going. Come up with a plan. You know, here at the ranch, we're actually going to be taking some of our yard. We, we actually sat down and thought of it. It's a very logical thing. Very logical person most of the time. And uh, I think Alicia would say I'm maybe too logical too, too often. I need to work on my emotional IQ, right? I love you, honey. <laughs> uh, so what, uh, what I was going to say is we sat down and said, you know, we're spending money on gas and time to mow the yard. Why? Well, it looks pretty. Well, do we need that much pretty yard? Well, no. All right. What do we need? We need food. How about we rip up some of the yard and redo the irrigation and actually grow more food? Spends less gas, gets more benefit, and the time you put into it actually results in something that's important. So we are making those decisions, and we're also getting another tower. Uh, we're going to have our first triple-deck tower coming up here, and we're really excited about that. And uh, it's going to go inside, our first one that we're putting inside out of the garage. So, yeah, uh, grocery prices are going up, and uh, you need to start getting ready for that. Food prices continue to increase as pandemic impact supply and demand. Yeah, well, supply and demand, I guess, if you want to say the demand side, you know, people have been eating for a long time, but demand's going up because people don't trust that there'll be stuff on the shelves because we can't trust any form of media that's telling us to calm down or to freak out. Uh, so, uh, yeah, people are increasing demand, not because they're eating more, but because they want to make sure they have food. Uh, so that's not hoarding. That's just intelligence. Uh, intelli or hoarding is when you go out and you buy way more than what you need, uh, even if you are being prepared. I encourage everybody to be prepared. We're being prepared, but we don't go out and buy all the food on the shelves. So uh, I would encourage people, though, if you're not doing this yet, you should be. You should be getting prepared. You should be doing it smartly. You should be doing it fairly. Think about your neighbor. Think about them. Think about how you want to be treated. Uh, the golden rule applies uh, to preparing just as much as it does to everything else. At least I think so. I want to do some uh, comments here. Uh, please do add your comments if you haven't done so already. Political, political Martian, I love it. I face the same problems in the Netherlands. We are so extremely efficient with production. Only way of doing something is with uh, very niche stuff. Yeah, uh, I think there, what were we talking about there? Political Martian, love the name by the way. Uh, that you, you're referencing, uh, I'm, I guess there's a lot I've gone over. Uh, QA, the shelves in the UK, just think of the USR 1980s, especially fresh food. That's not good. Uh, that's good information. Is that happening, QA? Is that happening just in like your down? I, 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 I think British cities kind of laid out the UK cities. They're kind of circular, right? They're kind of like our Washington, D.C., where there's the central part and it kind of expands outwards. They're not the square blocks like what we'd see here in the U.S. So I'm, I'm curious to know if if your inner city uh, areas, which tend to be the more highly populated uh, where the businesses occur, if those shelves are empty or are they full? And then as you go outwards, you're seeing the emptiness occur. Because I have a theory, I have a theory that what, you know, food follows money. Uh, every, well, everything follows money, uh, mostly. Uh, you can't have two masters, so some people can't follow money. But you know what I'm saying? Okay, right. food follows money. So here's the theory that I have is what we're going to see as far as famine and food shortages go is they will start in the poorest part of the world, country, state, city, town. Uh, and what I mean by that is farmers have to make a profit. They at least have to break even. In order to do that, 
they will sell their crops to the place where they're going to make the most money um, because they have to. It would be stupid if they didn't. Uh, if you live in a small town and you could get five bucks on the corner of your lot uh, selling directly there, or you can get 20 bucks by selling to a guy who comes and picks it up, which one are you selling to, right? It's pretty obvious. The math is simple. You got to put food on your table. Um, and I'm, that's no judgment. Like I'm not judging these people for doing it. That's good business. And that's what they should do. They should be worried about their family and putting food on the table. So out of necessity, I think what we're going to see, my theory goes, is that you will see food scarcity start on the outer part of, of the money circles, and you will see it least on the inside. So I'm curious uh, if you see, you know, if it's in the, the part where there's a lot of money, or is it everywhere, or is it really on the outskirts and it's moving its way in? Um, for people that live out in the outskirts of this concept, I, you've got to be growing your own food. Uh, start growing your own food now. Get your infrastructure figured out. Get the parts now. There's a shortage of PVC in the Americas. Um, never seen that in my life. I'm 42 years old. And I've never, ever heard of a PVC shortage. That stuff's everywhere. It's like air. Uh, yet now we're being rationed on it. So, uh, yeah, let me know what, what's going on there. Okay, uh, hi Martian, hello everyone. Uh, greetings from Canada. Well, hello, thanks for joining us from Canada. Uh, Night All Studio Pro, really appreciate you coming on. Uh, it's great having you here. Uh, QA said, how much is food waste tracking in the USA? Well, I, you know, I don't know. I, I think your question is, you know, are we watching how much food waste there is? And I would say that in America, we're wasteful of pretty much everything, unfortunately. I'm quite ashamed of that. Um, but I would say uh, our food waste is very high. Uh, and what that means is that there's plenty of food, but because we don't use it efficiently or because of greed, uh, overabundance, um, we're not doing a good Christian thing there, quite honestly. Um, how effective is your system for someone with no tech background, Renato asked. Uh, good question, Renato. Uh, I would say right now, as our software is being developed, it's becoming more and more user-friendly. So as the software comes online, the system becomes more and more usable as far as the technical side of things go. As far as the growing side, the uh, key actions that someone needs to take for our systems are going to be watching it right now until the computers come online for that. Uh, but even then, you'd still want to keep an eye on it. And that takes like one or two minutes for a tower, just kind of looking at it, seeing what's going on. Uh, pruning it. You know, you got to prune. Uh, we're going to be bringing our digester into the tower so that you can actually take your prunings and just recycle those nutrients right back in the tower. Very excited about that. Uh, might come in the uh, next one or two versions. We'll be able to do that. Um, and uh, what is it? Once every three months, you need to uh, clean the filter, which is a reusable stainless steel. So you just drain the water from the filter, just turn some valves, unscrew it, put it under the sink, clean it off. You don't have to dry it. Put it back in and uh, lock it in so that's not technical i think most people can unscrew something and screw it back in even comes with a little tool to help people who don't have the hand strength uh, for that and then um, the very first week that you get a tower you have to watch the nozzles because uh, the nozzles can get clogged pretty easy because they're so fine we have two filters on the system but there can still be debris left over from the manufacturing process and that first week you're going to find it and then after that you shouldn't have to touch the nozzles for like three months four months and then you just got to keep an eye on it. And what you'll do is you just take off the top of the nozzle, a little acupuncture needle, and just put it back on. It's really simple. Um, as far as planting goes, it's really, here's the thing, put the seeds in. There you go. Super easy. Super easy. Good question. Okay. Um, political Martian. Watch years back uh, when he submitted his submission to be sent to Mars. Haven't been able to follow his journey so far, but saw this live stream. Uh, and recommended. Yeah, hey, well, I'm glad you were able to see it. Again, I love your name, and thanks for watching around so long. Yeah, um, wanted to do a lot of things, and uh, God has really pushed me in, into this direction, so thanks for following along. It is uh, QA. It's mainly linked to Brexit. We had 75,000 truck drivers leave the UK. Well, yeah, that's a big pile of poo there as well, isn't it? Uh, okay, Nidal Studio Pro. Uh, thank you, brother. I'm a longtime follower, and I really appreciate what you're doing. Well, I appreciate that comment. It's nice. We go through a lot of hard work here, uh, so I'm glad that people 
uh, like it. Hey, uh, for those, if you're here, then you've been around for a while, so I'm going to go into some personal stuff here. Um, but I appreciate everybody else uh, following along. If you don't want to hear some personal things, now's the time to check out. But otherwise, I'm going to share some personal stuff. I, uh, For those that don't know, I'm former Air Force. You can see some of the stuff behind me there. Up on my wall, a few medals and stuff like that. Nothing fancy. I'm not a door kicker or anything like that. I didn't, I'm, a, I'm an aerospace engineer, so I did development. But I... Uh, Space stuff. I did intelligence, information operations. I deployed to Iraq. Did some cool things there. And uh, I will say, in this personal topic, I have served with this man right here. Um, uh, and this kind of brings tears to my eyes. I've served with this man. He was an honorable man. Um, but he came online and said some stuff that, yeah, this article really, really. I agree with this article. I don't the source. I don't care about it's National Review. I don't know if conservative, liberal. I don't really care. The headline. I absolutely agree with uh, the things happening in Afghanistan right now. They rip my heart out. They really rip my heart out. Um, and when this gentleman who I had the pleasure of serving with um, over ten years ago uh, in Iraq came out and said that the most powerful country in the world doesn't have the ability to secure a hundred yard corridor for Americans and families. My heart was ripped out and it hurt. I couldn't, I honestly, I still can't believe he said it. There is no way to justify it. You can't sit there and be like, well, you had to say this because blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, no. If we wanted to, we would. And uh, that's the bottom line. If we wanted to, we would. So and I am I'm very upset with what's happening in my country. I am personally moved to the point of there's some lines that are starting. We're starting to come up to lines. And I don't, this isn't practice, guys. I don't have a script up or anything. I'm just sharing with you. This, this week has been rough uh, for a lot of people a lot of people and uh, what's going on in the world and the things that we deal with seeing the people fall from the airplane I think everyone's seen that picture uh, knowing that our friends and the Brits are over there doing stuff going out getting people yet the Americans aren't it is shameful and my country's not perfect Lord knows I'm not perfect, but I am ashamed of what's going on right now in the world and how America is acting. Uh, I am ashamed. So I guess I just wanted to share that. Honestly, I have no idea what to do about it. Um, things are changing the world so much that it's difficult to draw a line quite honestly it's like okay if, if we go across this line then i've got to do that where is that line i'm curious where is your where is your line at what what is what is enough what is too much like things are just for example there's no middle ground anymore you're either for me or against me uh we're all being divided we're all being shuffled down this this way of doing things I don't like. Like I can compromise, I can negotiate certain things I won't, but but certain things like for the most part, you know, it's pretty easy to get along with, you know, let's talk about it, let's figure it out. You're a person, I'm a person, you know, we put our pants on the same way. At least we used to. I guess maybe now it's on to put pants on, but you know, this world in this week uh, this last two years, it's been rough, man. It's been rough, and it's been really rough on a lot of people. I can't really complain too much, and I, I'm, I'm commenting on it from a moral, mental, you know, point of view. Whereas there's people out there that can't put food on their table. Well, I'm still trying to lose weight, you know. Uh, there's people out there that are fighting for their very lives, and I'm safe. Uh, so I'm not coming at it from a complaining I'm coming at it from I want to help and the only way I know how to help is to keep doing what I'm doing I'm gonna use the skills God has given me I'm gonna talk to you I'm gonna share this stuff 
I'm going to talk about Bible. I'm going to talk about Jesus Christ because quite honestly, he is the only way that this mess gets solved. And I am convinced of that more and more. I, I remember a comment I got a long time ago. How can an aerospace engineer who's so intelligent believe in such fairy tale stuff? I'm like, dude, I don't want to call you an idiot, but because that ain't Christian. But quite honestly, do you not recognize if you're in that camp that you believe in something just as much as I do? You believe in nothing created everything, right? I believe in God created everything. And there's a sequence of events that occurred through logic and through interpretation and through evidence that proves that Jesus Christ is the one way to make it all happen. So if you don't know that, if you haven't come to that, I'd encourage you to go read A Case for Christ. Uh, listen to it. I listened to it before I was a believer. It was a key part of why I became a believer, and I listened to it just recently, and it's really, really good. So go read that because they'll do better at it than I can. I'll be happy to share my own story with anybody at this point. If you want to know a way out of this mess and you've been searching and you don't know, email me at trm at therealmartian.com and I would be happy to engage with you uh, on any of these things because that is the only way out of this mess, I have concluded. And it is a mess and it's going to get worse. So uh, I want to talk about just a few other things here on the same vein. Thanks to everybody who has followed along, um, kind of using this time to just share. Honestly, I want your feedback. I want your comments. Add them in the comments below. I'm sitting here and I'm racking my brain about what to do. I see a world that is in moral failure. Not decay, failure. As in it has failed. Morality has gone away. There's a new thing that I will call the sliding scale of morality, which is, well, whoever's in charge and whatever they say is now what's right and what's wrong, which should scare the hell out of everybody out there, regardless of your political leanings. We never want a system that just radically changes every time one person comes in and another person comes in. We want stability. Stability is what's allowed us to be fruitful and multiply. So when we have instability because of radically different of opinions things fall apart so i'm looking at all this stuff and i'm like i don't we, we have a more moral failure we have mental disorders out of control substance abuse out of control opioid pandemic pre <laughs> It's now legal in Oregon to possess hard narcotics. You want to help people? Don't give them heroin. When did that, like, when did logic go away? So, <laughs> porn? Sex slave trade? Anybody? My mom works for a great organization, Zonta. Uh, she does amazing things. I'm so proud of her for what she does. This is a plug for Zonta. Women helping women doing great things. You know, um, and she says the stuff that she's learning about the sex trade is unbelievable. Well, that's just going up, folks. It ain't going down. It's going up. Everything is getting worse. Oh, you're just being a naysayer. You're just being a naysayer. Well, I'm talking about reality, folks. Welcome to it, you know. And so I'm looking at all these things and I'm going, where's the line? Where do you draw a line? Because what's happening is they're using the boil the frog technique, right? It's the let's shift, what is it called? The Overton window, right? Let's shift, let's shift the what's normal. Let's shift it, let's just keep shifting it. But the way they do the shift is one little piece at a time. And I uh, just don't know where to draw that line because the, the boiling of the frog technique makes it difficult to draw a hard line. It's a great approach. It's a great technique. If you want to manipulate people, use it, which tells me we're being manipulated because that's exactly what's going on. They're using that technique, and it's destructive. It's horrible because it puts people in a position that's like, well, you know, I'm not asking you to go out and, and hate your family members or anything like that. I just I don't think it's right that you should not support people that believe this. And you're like, well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I should go hate anyone just because they're different than me. Oh, okay, but you agree that they're different than you. Well, yeah. Well, do you think that what they're doing is okay? Well, it seems like they might be hurting somebody. Um, 
okay? And they just keep taking you down this road until eventually you hate them. Like, I, uh, so, uh, yeah. I'll go look at some comments here. Uh, I think the event was fabricated for some reason to get us back in more boots on the ground for some reason, probably related to the poppy fields, just my opinion. I appreciate your opinion. In today's world, who knows? A Case for Christ is a movie now and on Pure Flix. Uh, it is a movie now, but the book is, uh, you have to read the book. The movie is about him as a human being, uh, and they weave the stuff in that is a, is the focus of the book. The focus of the book is the content that I'm recommending people go read. Uh, sorry, okay, I'm new to this. Brian, uh, welcome. I uh, really appreciate you're here. Uh, Pro, I can tell that history is repeating itself, thinking about the story about Pharaoh and Joseph. Indeed, yes. Get well, I think if you're talking about it from the food standpoint, uh, look at that. Um, maybe, but if, if I'm seeing it from a different perspective than you are, please clarify. Uh, well, this, chan uh, this channel. Well, thank you, Brian, for coming. Uh, moral decay is the shift. Yeah, it is. I would ask you to look at Revelations. Yes, absolutely. I've studied Revelations. I've uh, read the Bible quite a few times front to back. I'm not one of those people who just says these things. I really believe what I believe, and I study it, I read it, and I did a very detailed study on Revelations. In fact, I read the Bible backwards. If you've never read the Bible backwards, do it. It's a great thing. And there's so many different head-bunting opinions in Christianity today. The religion instead of the relationship, I'll, I'll point that out there as a huge difference. If you look at Revelation and you read it backwards, you kind of get rid of a lot of the preconceived notions because it's kind of like, hey, if I know I need to go build a wall, you know, where's the wall need to be and what does the wall look like? And then you back everything out of that for your project plan. So I did that and it's very, very interesting. I actually created a huge, my, my cousin and I, we spent like two whole days doing nothing but Revelation deep dives. And that was in addition to time we spent on our own. And we came out with what we see going on. And I'll be, t I'll, I'll be honest, I'll be blunt to everybody. If you haven't been reading Revelations, if you haven't been studying your Bible, or if you just like the fuzzy warm uh, stuff of the Bible, then you need to get up on it. And uh, I totally agree with M or, uh, with Brian. Read Revelation, read the science, because I'll, I'll point it out. Um, here's here's an example, right? There's an argument in Christian uh, in religious organizations and, and academia about you know are we in the tribulation? Are we not? What do the four horsemen mean? What are all these symbols that are in the Bible? What do they all mean? Uh, there's plenty of arguments. There's plenty of arguments, but you know, if you just step back for a moment and ask yourself this, like the beginning, for those that don't know, there are things that Jesus says that are the beginning of pains and beginnings of troubles, like uh, race against race. Have you seen that? You know, rumors of war. How about deception? Have you seen any of those things? Because Jesus himself said, like, when this stuff starts happening, look up because your redemption draws near. And amen, Maranatha, let's get it on because uh, that's the way through this. But anyway... If you go fast forward from uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and you get into Revelation, the last book of the Bible, it lays out the events that occur in the end. And there's debate over the sequence of these things. There's debate. Don't come on and say you know it because nobody does. Um, there's debate. You, I have my belief. You have your belief. All those things. But there's debate. So here's, here's the thing that I want to encourage you to step back from. So there are the four horsemen, the first seals of everything. That is the beginning of the end. So here's, here's how it goes. There's the white horse, there's the red horse, there's the black horse, there's the pale horse, the green horse. There's debate over colors and all this. But here's the general interpretation that as I, as a human being, read these things. The first horse is about a spirit of conquest. The second horse is about war and conflict. The third horse is about famine and inflation, economic inflation. Uh, and the fourth horse is just, quite frankly, death. So let's look at these four. Because these are the first four of six seals that begin the troubles that define the beginning and the end. Now, what we don't know is if these seals are part of what we call the tribulation or the great tribulation or the time of Jacob's troubles. We just know that they occur and they're a part of something. If you draw a logical conclusion that they are part of the tribulation, I encourage you to put the links down below as to how you can prove that because in my reading, you cannot line up the seals with anything until you get somewhere close to about the sixth seal. Uh, and then things get pretty interesting at that point. You can kind of align it to Daniel and all those things. So Daniel 12, great book. Read that, Daniel 9, Daniel 12. Uh, the whole book's good. So anyway, let's step back. A spirit of conquest. 
can anybody say right now that there's a global movement to get people to do what the global movement wants them to do? I'd say for the first time in history, there is truly a global effort to get people to do what we want them to do, whoever we are. And uh, you can put a name to it. It's called the Global Reset. And uh, they're pretty open with what they want to do. You'll own nothing. You'll be happy. Uh, do we see a push towards globalization? Well, we have for the last few decades. Uh, and, uh, you know, part of what happened when President Trump came into office is he bucked that trend and really kind of made some people unhappy with that. And other countries did the same thing. They went to nationalism instead of globalism. And the whole world just erupted. So I'd say that it's pretty clear, in my opinion, if you just step back and you drop all preconceived notions of what the SEALs mean, I'd say that we could emphatically say that a spirit of conquest has been released. You could also argue it's been out there for a long time, but I'm talking about really clearly a global thing. Uh, there has been no global thing. There's been nation or regional things uh, that are like this, but never a global thing. And uh, so I'd say it's out. The horse is out. So I think the first seal is over. And the second seal is war, uh, the red horse, and conflict, right? So is there a spirit of conflict and war? You can argue that's been there forever. So you could say this one's clearly been open. But I'd say if you look back over the course of the last few years, you would see that conflict has increased globally. There's always been conflict, but it's never been so global. There's always been conflict, but never so global, and it seems to be coordinated. It's kind of all happened. So I think the red horse is out. And if you look at the third one, which I think is the most clear one that we're literally watching happen in front of our eyes, the black horse is about famine and about inflation. Uh, Day's wages for a loaf of bread is said in the Bible, right? So I can't quote every verse, but it's there, so go read it. Um, read it on your own. But what we're seeing is clearly inflation. Uh, did we not just go over that? Did I not just hit all of these articles about uh, inflation and food security, soaring cost of food, food, food prices going up, food prices going up, right? We are seeing this. And and it's not just happening locally, it's happening globally. It is happening globally. What does that mean? Well, I think, and we're not talking about inflation, by the way. The powers that be are talking about hyperinflation globally. So it seems to me that we're watching, if, if the, the black horse seems to be out of the stable, and he seems to be no longer walking, seems that maybe he's in a trot. You know, he's not up to a full run yet, but he's in a trot. Uh, he might get into gallop next. Uh, so we're seeing that happen. Uh, and then I, I don't think the fourth seal is open yet because I think the black seal is not, I, I think that black rider, the third seal has not been fully realized. But I think if you look at it uh, from these, the stepping back and dropping preconceived notions and just say, well, what's the intent? What is kind of being communicated there? It seems to me like these things are happening. And uh, that's part of what the Eden stuff is all about, is like getting, you know what's coming, so you might as well get ready for it. And uh, I think as humans, the best thing we can do is be a light to others. I think our company, Eden, is a light. We're trying to inspire people. We're trying to go the opposite direction. We want you to be able to, to make your food and to make your future better through the stuff that we believe God has given us to help you with. Uh, we believe what we're doing is a mission from God. <laughs> so we're doing it. Uh, I mean, it's so easy to get captured in the, uh, the darkness of these things. Uh, but in these times is when people have the opportunity to choose to demonstrate courage, uh, to demonstrate uh, a, a desire to go out there and help people. And that is what we want to do. Uh, we don't want, I don't want to just sit here and watch the world burn around me while I'm safe in my little foxhole. I don't want the world to burn. I, I want it to be saved. And uh, I've come to the conclusion that as I watch all these things and I see these things happening, uh, I believe we are, we've entered the terminal phase of this whole thing. And if you look at MIT, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, 
the UN and anyone in power, they're all pretty much saying the same thing now. Like, uh, the end is near. So, uh, oh, I'm going to turn that off. Uh, so we got radios here to allow us all to communicate. Sorry about that. So anyway, there's that comments. Uh, I would ask you to look at Revelation. This is much to be gleaned. Uh, and what you have to do, I see the Bible as a history science in the book of the law. Yeah. Uh, please check your mic. Literally, I have the speaker glued to my ear face. Sorry about that. Uh, the NW of the willingness for conflict is pressing. Thanks for being a positive moral center. Appreciate that. It's a very nice comment. Compliment. It started in the beginning of 2020. Uh, bless you and your group and family. Sadly, I have to get back to work. Well, Brian, thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for everybody for being here. I need to get back to work as well. Uh, I will say this, that, yeah, when 2020 was going on, I remember sitting in this spot and watching the news late at night, and I saw the COVID stuff happening. And what ended up really kicking in is uh, it felt like something different had happened in here, not through input. You get bad news all the time, but it felt like there was a major shift. Uh, so I think that's an indicator that something really did shift and I see those things happening. So I wanted to share it. Uh, I think we're all in the coming days going to be challenged to draw a line in the sand and say what side of it we stand on. I do believe that. I believe that 100%. And you're going to be forced to one way or the other. So I'd say get your ducks in a row, study your word, get in the Bible. If you're not a believer, I encourage you to, to all the haters that hear me saying this stuff and you think I'm an idiot, just go look at my LinkedIn for crying out loud. I'm not an idiot. I've had a successful career. Uh, I've done well. I'm intelligent. I'm smart. And if you actually want to challenge yourself, I challenge you to this. Get down on your knees, pray to the God that you don't believe in to show you if he's real or not and be open for the answer because I think you'll be a little impressed and shocked with what does occur um, because he's real, he's living, and that's how you know it's not fake is you could just ask him, can you show me that you are real? And if your eyes are truly open, uh, you will see, and he will show you. He did me, and I'm an aerospace engineer with a degree and a master's degree in leadership, and uh, I can tell you that the logic and the evidence is absolutely clear. <laughs> it is so clear. All you have to do is be willing to look at the real evidence and not just listen to what some uh, sociology or psychology teacher tried to convince you that it's all fake. It is real, and the evidence is there, both historical and biblical. And right now, today, our God is a living God. He lives, and I want you all to do that. I guess. My answer to what do we do to help is we share the gospel, we tell people about Jesus Christ, and we get out there and actually be examples and be lights to people. We help, we do what we can, because at the end of the day, we've got to take care of our family. We've got to put food on the table, too. We all have the same problems. So I would encourage every one of you, go be a light. Go be a light. And with that, I appreciate your time. Uh, I really, really appreciate you taking time. I kind of got onto it. Like I said, I, I did my normal cast today. Since Bart wasn't here, uh, I'm just sharing my personal. These are my personal views. Uh, I'm not, not reflecting. Again, this is this is the Real Martian channel, and and it's just me today. So I'm just sharing you my personal views. Um, not everybody agrees with me. Not everybody has to agree with me. I'm okay with that. <laughs> the rest of the world apparently isn't. They're gonna hate me. I'm gonna be hated for this uh, particular uh, post. I'm sure, but. I don't know what else to do other than to tell people about my story and about Jesus and about how he saved me from deep, dark hurts and pains and that he will be the way that this all is solved. Man, I'd rather be a janitor in heaven than be a ruler in hell. Uh, that is for sure. And uh, whoever came up with the opposite one that says, you know, I'd rather be a ruler in heaven than serve in, in heaven. Um, Quite honestly, that is idiotic. <laughs> that is dumb. Like you, oh, you want to be a ruler in a place that burns your skin. Ah, that's not very good. So anyway, ah, I'm sorry. You can tell that this this week has kind of racked me on an emotional level. I just wanted to share it. I want you guys to comment down below. What do you think? What are your thoughts? If you don't have anything good to say, just don't say it, right? Um, we don't have time for that stuff. Go be a good person. Be a good person. 
share good stuff, be a good person, show respect to each other. Uh, that old rule, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say it, is a really good rule. Is anyone else finding out that these old sayings actually mean a lot? Because I am. With that, uh, please do go sign up Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, hit the thumbs up, bash that button.